May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into your higher love this morning. Amen. So this is a poem that I needed to hear this week. I don't know about you. It's called Shine, so it's perfect for Epiphany, and it's by Andrea Gibson. I was once told the story of a shaman who woke every single morning in his life crying for all the world's sorrow. And yet, every day he would rise and shine bright. He would walk the path from morning to night when he would light the night sky with the stars. The stars that would shine inside his dreams. And for every hell he ever saw, he made himself become the hope that tugged the rope that rang the bell in the steeple of the people's hearts. He would part the seas of greed with the outstretched hands of his giving, replacing the hate with the most amazing grace this world has ever seen. A week ago, another war started and there wasn't a poem inside me that wasn't crying. There wasn't a poem inside me that didn't pound with the sound of a thousand bombs screaming to where children on the ground were dying. And I, I didn't want to speak, I didn't want to sleep because I didn't want to wake to another morning of mourning so many when already tombstones had paved as many prairies as highways had and the traffic was backed up to my heart and I didn't know where to start, like it was all too much, like I could never reach to touch a healing hand to the wounds the world stood so brutally branded with, like I couldn't bear the pain, like I could never find the strength to lift a prayer of faith beneath it all. And I felt so small. Felt like we were all so small. Too small to even knock a dent into the door that holds the hateful hinges of this war. And a week ago, I almost wanted to give up. But then I remembered the story of the man who lived his life as a light through even the darkest nights. His eyes held the song of the dawn and his sorrow was the thing that kept him moving on, kept him building a better tomorrow. I remember the story and somewhere behind everything inside me that felt so small, behind every voice inside me that was doubting, came a voice behind that, loud and proud, like my grandmother's voice shouting, what do you mean you're small? Of course you're small. We're all small, like the moon is small in the sky and not a wave would ever find its way to shore without us. We are all as small as a single tide, but if that tide were to ever stop, the entire ocean would freeze in shock and nothing in it would survive. We are all small like the notches on the line that will one day wind the revolution through every gutter in this world. Then it's time we start believing in our power because the darkest hour will only come if we refuse to flower the light that has always burned bright inside us. So decide, what would you die for? Then live every moment of your life like you were born into this life just to save it. Knowing the light at the end of the tunnel is the fire of your faith, so never put it out. And every time you start to doubt, listen to the cries of everyone who has come before you, pushing you on. They know there has never been a bomb built that can wilt the petals of your power. When you allow yourself to bloom, when you bloom, there will be no room for anything else. Gandhi said, you must be the change that you wish to see in the world. 
So you've been curled up and sad? Good. Depression is the first blessing. It means you've been in tune. But now the moon is waiting for you to burn bright and there has never been a time when your light was needed more. Never a time like this before. Yes, you are small. We are all small as a single breath, but tied to the rest, we are all the life of the world. The pulse that turns rocks to pearls inside the darkness of their shells. So become the well where wishes are born. Become the bell that rings when even the birds refuse to sing. Become the wings that fly and every time you're full of sorrow, every time you wake up crying, know that that day is a perfect day to shine. Here ends the poem. The world's problems are big today, and it's the smallest things that change everything. For the Christian church, Epiphany celebrates the revelation of God's hope for the world quietly being born into the smallest thing. At a time of fear and unrest, a baby boy is born in a cattle stall to a poor teenaged mother. He was small as a single breath, but he was the life of the world, the pulse inside the darkness where wishes are born. And the message of Epiphany is this. The large and the powerful can be toppled can be brought down by something small like a baby, a higher love, a dream, a simple change in direction. King Herod in our story and our scripture from today is a leader inserted by the Roman Empire who heard about a baby born in Bethlehem who was, be, who was to become king of the Jews, and he erupted into a vengeful, murderous jealousy. No one could be king but him. He was large and that baby was small. He would win. He raged and he sputtered, he ruminated and he intimidated, too gutless and powerless to do anything on his own. Herod looked around for those loyal to him and fearful of his power to do his dirty work. He called on some Gentile scientists, wise men and astrologers, to follow the star where that tiny baby lay, where that small thing lay sleeping in heavenly peace. And he wanted these men to reveal the powerful baby's location, right? Just so that Herod could destroy him. So the wise men left. They left to follow the brightest star that they had ever seen out of the darkness, journeying for days with no map or direction, not even knowing the final destination. They just kept doing the next right thing until they reached Bethlehem, home of bread. The wise men do in fact find the baby and they are filled with joy. And they offer him gifts of gold fit for royalty frankincense in honor of his religious leadership and myrrh foreshadowing his death on the cross and his resurrection. After visiting the baby Jesus, the wise astrologers intuitively knew that the gifts he would give the world were far more precious than the gifts that they had brought. The light of his truth invaded their consciousness so much that they dreamt about it that night. And the next day, they chose another path home rather than give up the location of that baby to Herod as they were ordered to do. They went another way. And Epiphany is often described as a moment of great realization that causes one to change direction. What the wise men learn is that something small can contain a larger hope, a larger hope than they ever thought possible. 
a higher love. And their response, their response, response is to bow and go a new way home. Pete and Kate reminded me of this quote by Anthony Bourdain this week. It seems that the more places I see and experience, he says, the bigger I realize the world to be. The more I become aware of, the more I realize how relatively little I know of it, how many places I still have to go, how much more there is to learn. Maybe that's enlightenment enough to know that there is no final resting place of the mind, no moment of smug clarity. Perhaps wisdom, at least for me, means realizing how small I am and unwise and how far I still have to go. This is the epiphany message. If the wisdom you have achieved so far in your life, like the wise men, is that you are small, unwise, and still have a long way to go, a good response would be to simply bow in humble adoration and find a new way home. Epiphanies happen small after all. The smallest movement on my yoga mat can feel, can make me feel as though every muscle in my body is being stretched like the salt water taffy machine stretches taffy goodness in the window on the Rye Beach boardwalk. The smallest change in my routine, like praying on my knees in the morning or taking a walk around my neighborhood or drinking tea at 5 p.m. instead of wine can make me a person with a far deeper and wider capacity for love. Epiphanies happen small. In small towns where we are stuck together, in small conversations over coffee with people we disagree with, in small kindnesses from strangers letting you reach for the milk first at Market Basket on a Saturday. <laughs> We know that gigantic transformation is possible in small communities of faith gathered in love like this one, too. We know that church can change the weary world into something that resembles heaven. Jesus created the church to be small and contain the whole world at the same time. So in 2020, it's 2020. It sounds so futuristic. In 2020, I wish for you the courage of the wise to admit to yourself and to others that you only have a minuscule piece of the truth. There is no final resting place of the mind, no moment of smug clarity. We know so little about God and each other. Let that fact invade our consciousness so much, so much, that we dream about it at night. And let that be the gift we receive. And in the morning, let's find a new way home. And become the well where wishes are born. Become the bell that rings even when the birds refuse to sing. Become the wings that fly. And every time you're full of sorrow, every time you wake up crying, Know that today is the perfect day to shine. Amen.